Hello everyone and welcome to the next uh, food show that I'm going to be giving tonight. It'll be a surprise. Partly is a surprise. So I'm going to ask my cameraman who happens to be my son. Are there lots and lots of people? There's no one there yet. All right, okay, I'm going to wait a little while until the first one comes and um, registers. One, one. and who is it? Um, I cannot see. Hello, I'm not sure who you are, but my son is going to click and then we'll see your name. Can you um, write your name, please, so that we can see your name? That would be lovely. I'd like to say hello to you. <laughs> okay, whoever you are, welcome on board. Um, today is Thursday and on Thursdays I give my shows in English and once again we're going to wait maybe a half a minute, one minute until we officially start. I hope I can entertain you in the meantime and I'm going to ask my son Nikolai if there's anyone else on board. Two people Two? but no names. And no names. Now for those of you who are watching, would you mind writing your names? Four. Four. Four of you. All four of you. Can you write your names so we can, I can say hello to you? With your name, of course. <laughs> okay, and for those of you who just docked in, um, we're going to start in about a half a minute, in a minute, more or less, um, depending on the number of people. We'll start once there are seven or eight. We are now four. We're now eight people. But we're now eight. Okay, so there will be a little more. You have to say it's English. English. Um, Twelve. We're Twelve. now 12. This is lovely. Hello, everybody. I'm so glad. This is a large number for the international section. It's lovely. Letizia uh, uh, Frontana. Ah, so Letizia. Hello, Letizia. We see your name. Hello. Welcome. And everybody else whose name I don't see or my son cannot see, welcome on board. Okay, I think we will slowly start and those who will come a little later, they will be able to see the replay a little later if they so, if they so wish. Now, I'm sure there are lots of newcomers. Um, I'm going to introduce myself. My name is Alexandra von Hahn, and I am an author of the um, Culinary Magic of the Emirates, which is the first cookbook um, written by a non-Emirati, by an expat, and that tells you a lot already. Um, by expat, I lived in the United Arab Emirates for five years because my husband is a German diplomat, and he's retired now. But we lived there for five years and they were wonderful, wonderful years. All other postings were semi or high risk countries. Um, and you'll be probably, you probably have the privilege of tasting the specialties from every country as um, Tuesdays and Thursdays pass on. So next Thursday, there might be a surprise. May not be Emirati, might be Emirati. Okay, and I am, uh, for those of you who don't know me at all, uh, and you wonder, where do I come from? Uh, I think I'm a mixture myself. My mother being Hungarian, my father being a German Balt. I was born because my parents were in South America, in Chile. Three siblings, another sibling, we moved to Canada. And it goes on and on like this. So I never stayed very long anywhere, for that matter. But nevertheless, the longest period it was in Canada. So therefore, I am officially Canadian. All right. Tonight is going to be a very, very special recipe, as every time you see me, it's a special recipe. We're going to have karak. In fact, if you're in the kitchen and if you have a few spices, just take out a few spices, black tea and water. This is, you don't have to cook with me, but at least you will get the feeling of how, of what we're going to be doing today. Karak, what does that mean? Where does the word come from? Why is it Emirati? Those questions are very, very valid. Um, officially, karak is from India. Actually, masala tea or masala chai. Um, for those of you who don't know, and not many do, is the entire Gulf area was uh, influenced and is still influenced by India, very, very strongly so. And um, the um, masala chai was transported over or brought to the United Arab Emirates in the 1960s when the United Arab Emirates discovered oil. And that's, they already traded during the uh, pearl um, harvesting. Um, they traded with India, they traded with, with, with Iran, um, but the tea as such, karak, not masala chai, but karak, um, was introduced in the 60s. Having said that, karak, what does that mean? Karak in Urdu means strong, it means 
officially means strong, it means stiff, it means a very heavy tea. And guess what? Yeah, it is a heavy tea. It has everything inside that we shouldn't eat, but it's lovely and it tastes just delicious, absolutely delicious. So why do you think that the Emiratis, they're, they're not serving it in very large cups. They're now, in the last 12 months, smaller cups. And because there's a debate, the debate is that four out of five living or residing in the United Arab Emirates um, seem to have a diabetes or are on their way of having diabetes. So meaning the sugar intake. Well, I have a solution to all this. I'm going to show you the traditional recipe and then you can alter it a little if you so wish at home. Now, why am I doing all these shows? There's a very good reason. I love cooking. I love my shows. And um, I hope that you enjoy them as well. And especially during this particular challenging time, it's for all of us very challenging, whether we are with a family or with friends or with our husband, wife, or alone at home. This recipe, as every time um, I broadcast a recipe, it's fun to do, fun to prepare for anyone who's alone at home as well. Which means if you're alone at home and you are quarantined, as most of us are, as we are as well, we're only allowed to go to the pharmacy, to the stores, um, but with our mouth guard and with gloves too. Having said this, um, try to have your, the next time when you're going to be doing this particular recipe, have your, uh, your mobile or your laptop ready and share it with someone else so you can both cook it and then have a rendezvous with Karak. Okay, <laughs> all right. Okay, so what I am going to say that in case you see some uh, boxes behind me when I turn around a little later, long story short, we had a flood, uh, quite a severe one. Uh, so we had to move upstairs and there are no laborers available for the time being until further notice. Corona came along as well. And for those of you who may have sympathy with me, we just lost a tenant, meaning commercial tenant, because they can't afford the rent. So we're going through the the um, the effects of Corona, completely normal. But by the way, let's keep our positive attitude, which is what I do. And tonight we have Karak. Okay, <laughs> I'm going to show you, Karak is composed of so powdered tea. And I'm going to show you how to powder the tea. I was unable, it's the first time ever, I was unable to get powdered tea from my Arabic or from my Turkish store in Cologne, sorry, in New Cologne in Berlin. Um, so I'm going to show you how to powderize it. And here I have loose tea, which is, um, they call it Turkish tea, but it's from, from India and it's very, very similar to the tea that we drink in the United Arab Emirates. However, in the meantime, the Emiratis, they are absolutely flexible and they use many types of tea. I'm going to show you another type if my son just stays here for a minute. I have um, another type of tea, which is um, in fact packaged in Austria. However, the Emiratis, they like to combine about 80% local. They call it local tea. It's not local. 10, 15 percent um, European. It, the, the, it, the blend for European is just a little milder and has more perfume, a much stronger perfume, although the Indian tea is perfumed as well. Okay, I'm going to ask my son to come a little closer. And the tea, why is it so special? And as I said before, it's heavy or it's strong. Yes, indeed it is. It's combined with ginger, with fresh ginger, and if no fresh ginger is available, we use powder. Two different flavors, although it's the same root, but they taste very differently. And I prefer um, the fresh ginger. And we're going to use a few cloves. They give the flavor. And we're going to be using cardamom. For those of you who have not seen the cardamom, I'm going to ask my son to come close. This is a pod with seeds. And what do we want? We want both the uh, seeds and the shell. We're going to be dropping that into the hot water. And then further on, we have our star of anise. And this is a beautiful star right here. Um, as you notice that the Emiratis, they work um, with spices all the time. Every single dish has spices. Um, it gives a perfume, it has a special flavor, and it honors their senses. And this is what this is all about. In, in other words, they're being very, very, very mindful and respectful with their um, spices. So here we go. 
we have the seeds and we have the outer wooden shell. Both go into the tea. And then we have, there was one, yes, of course. We have here um, cinnamon, and you're familiar with the uh, Cylon cinnamon, which I'm going to break. And it's actually, it just breaks into little sheets, which is just wonderful. And you use just a little bit for one liter. I'm going to give you the recipe. Or what the Indians and Emiratis use, they use the other cinnamon. It's called cassia. Cassia, you don't use very much from this. Of this, um, you may. Uh, it's actually recommended. They they use it for all the meals, but it's quite strong. And the um, the other um, cinnamon is so the Cylon is so much milder and very becoming for the stomach. Although cassia, this very thick bark from the cinnamon tree. Um, is also healthy as well, but only used in moderate amounts. So we're going to use cassia. For those of you who do not have cassia at home, then you can use um, cinnamon. And if you don't have the whole cinnamon, you can use the powdered cinnamon. Now, least, last but not least, we're also going to be using, as I said before, the cardamom. We have to break the pods in order for the uh, flavors to exude. And I'm going to, just under your camera, Nikolai, we have Zafran. For those of you who are not familiar with it, and for those of you who are, you've seen this last week, or last, I think, Tuesday. The, each thread must have a thin end and a thicker end. It's actually there from the crocide um, plant, and they're taken one by one. So it takes a very long time. Um, to harvest them and this is the reason or one of the reason why it is the most expensive spice in the world um, the, the, the um, Zafran that I'm using comes from Iran um, It's the one that I prefer However, you can have the Zafran from Spain and from some other countries as well um, It's entirely up to you If you are going to be traveling to the Gulf area and especially of course to the United Arab Emirates you're going to be able to buy the Karak for one dirham, which is anywhere between 20, 30, 40, 50 cents euro, or right up to 25, 30 dirham, which is anywhere between 6, 7, 8 um, euros, depending if you're going to the hotels, or if you're going to a very chic, very, very chic restaurant, or if you're going, what I did, you go to the uh, hole in the wall um, cafeteria. They call themselves cafeteria. It's the best place to go. And how do I know that? very easy. When I had time, which wasn't all the time, maybe once, twice a week, in the United Arab Emirates, I jumped into my Land Cruiser and drove and drove behind the buses. Of course, I was caught by many of my um, husband's colleagues. You know, why am I chasing after the buses? Because it's a main street and most of us, they know each other. So having said that, I would stop and park my car and follow the bus driver the, or the bus drivers to the small cafeteria and I would order the same thing that they ordered. Not always under one dollar or two dollars or one or two euros. And what did I order every time? It was always the same thing. Rice with fish or rice, rice with a chicken curry and of course karak. So I got used to drinking karak. My blood pressure went high a little higher than usual because I drank a little too much of it. Although I don't normally have high blood pressure, but I certainly did when I drank too much karak. Okay, um, so what I'm trying to tell you is that if you are going to be traveling and if we're allowed to travel in, let's say, next year or so, and if you have the opportunity to go there, try to go to these very simple hole-in-the-wall cafeteria. Don't be shy. They have the best karak. They're no longer served in large glasses. They're served in half the size because of the um, inflation. But nevertheless, you can still get it for one or two or three dirham, which is still not expensive. And now comes the cooking part. Okay. And here you're going to see, we, uh, we have the cooking, um, the water kettle. The water kettle in India and in the United Arab Emirates, this originates from India, but the Emiratis have and most of their kitchen utensils from India. And we cook the water in this kettle. When you have karak, and when you're serving karak in the United Arab Emirates, it's done almost the Indian way. Not quite, although their Indian cook actually prepares it, but there is a slight um, Emirati flavor in it. And I will give you that tonight. Now, I'm going to ask my son to come a little closer. 
we have a very large pot. This large pot is also from India, but used by the United, by the Emirates or by the Emiratis. And why? Their karak boils all day long, or it simmers, not boils, it simmers all day long in preparation for the um, unexpected guests, for the expected guests, and especially for the snacks between breakfast and lunch called fuala, between lunch and dinner called fuala as well. Without snacks, no life there. So we had the breakfast, we had the snack before lunch, we had lunch, we had snack, we had dinner and a snack at midnight. <laughs> Just goes to show you, huh? with a lot of food involved. So we're not going to be cooking in this pot. It's a little too much. I don't have a large family of 20 or 30. So I'm going to place it to the other side. What we are going to do and what the recipe calls for, here we go. I'm going to put the fire on high. And the water could be boiling, which is actually almost at its boiling point. And we're going to be adding, here I go, um, three cups, just a second, three, no, four, three cups, three tablespoons, yeah, four, four cups of water. Here we go. I'm going to make one liter of karak. So I'm going to add one cup. And it's actually hot, wonderful. One. Two. Oh, we have to fill it. Three. By the way, the cups are 250 mil. I think maybe my son can just zoom in here. If one cup equals 250 mil. So one more, meaning an equal, equal to one liter. So there we go. One liter. And this I will still keep it simmering. I can put it down a little lower. And we're going to be adding the tea. I, I said before that I was unable to get or to acquire the, um, the powder tea. The whole trick is to have the powder tea um, for the flavors to exude a little quicker because the tea is going to be boiled with the sugar. So I'm going to show you, if my son comes a little closer, I'm going to take the loose tea, drop it into my mortar and pestle, a little more, there we go. We need three tablespoons of our tea. So we're going to be powderizing it. And I'm not sure if my son can see it or you can see it. Now, if you don't have a, a mortar and pestle at home, you can use your coffee grinder. Um, and if you don't have that, then don't powderize it. Simply use the tea that you have. Or if you have tea bags, and by the way, your tea bag most likely comes from Dubai. It's the, the major place in the world to um, produce tea bags and that is done in Dubai. So there we go. There we go. We have now powderized tea. Leaves almost. We can just do a little more. There we go. And the, um, and the fragrance is exquisite. I'm just going to pretend that you can smell it as well. Okay, we have here the combination of um, Turkish tea, because I can acquire it here in, uh, Neu in uh, New Cologne, Berlin. has the very, very similar smell to the one that we would normally use in UAE. I added a little bit of the European um, tea or mix from, um, from Austria. Um, very similar to Earl Grey, if you wish, but you don't have to. Earl Grey for the, for the United Arab Emirates at home they use it, but when they buy the Karak commercially, it's your standard Lipton tea most of the time. They simply have the boxes ready and they're not actually packaged into small bags. Okay, now we have the, um, the powderized tea ready and I'm going to take three tablespoons. I'm going to take a tablespoon. There we go. Okay. So this is I'm, I'm heaping it because this is almost a, a tablespoon, so one tablespoon, two, three tablespoons. And it's already exuding. Um, the fragrance is simply exquisite if you're into teas. If you're not into teas, don't worry about it because you'll love it anyways. And I will tell you why. <laughs> okay, just a second. Um, I have to read my, my instructions. We're going to add a quarter cup of sugar. Here's a tea leaf inside. Okay, quarter cup. There we go. Now, normally, the Emiratis, they don't add one quarter cup. They add a lot more, meaning per glass, 
I'm going to show you per glass three to five teaspoons of sugar. However, for those of you who cannot consume sugar or do not wish to consume the sugar, I'm going to show you. So I'm going to first of all pour it inside and we have alternative to sugar, which is what I do here normally. Um, for those of you who are familiar or not familiar, you might be, um, you might like to uh, look into Eritreat. Um, and Eritreat is fermented grape or fermented corn. In Europe, it's usually, if you're in the United States or in the Anglophone countries, usually it's corn and in Canada it's corn as well. I prefer not to use corn unless you have organic Eritreat. And that particular sugar is fermented in such a way that the it's not absorbed. I think 95% is not absorbed by the intestine. So the body does not absorb it and the calories are not there, but it is sweet. Definitely, it is sweet. And I wouldn't use as much. I would start with, with a little less than a quarter cup of your Eritreat or half of that if you wish, one eighth. And you progress and add a little more if you want it sweeter. But this is a wonderful alternative if you don't want to have all the calories, the empty calories. Or, however, calories here, that's your xylit, which is birch tree sugar. Although you have to make sure it is actually birch tree and not other uh, or a different composition. Make sure it's organic as well. Um, and I strongly recommend it to be organic so that you can be sure as to what the contents are. And if you have the sweet, the sweetener of your choice, then you use the sweetener of your choice. If you're into stevia, you can use it, but stevia is the taste and the smell goes towards antibiotic smell. I know I'm being um, a little strong about this, but then the karak will not taste the way the karak should taste if you were to drop in a few um, tablets or um, uh, loose sugar from the um, stevia. Okay, next what we're going to add is, um, we're going to add, ah yes, here we go. We're going to add two of the star of anise. This is for one liter. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to mash them just ever so slightly. There we go. And drop them in. And don't worry, you're not going to be drinking these pieces because we're going to be straining it later. later. Okay. And we're going to be now using three, oh, you know what? Three, four cardamom. Because the whole idea of a karak is to have the karak taste like, I'm just going to transfer the tea. There we go. Um, I'm going to, um, the idea or the flavor of the karak is predominantly um, um, cardamom. So we're going to add here. I just simply crack them open. They're going in as they are four into the tea. However, the flavor is still not strong enough. So what am I going to do? We're going to add powderized. It's a half a teaspoon. Yeah, half a teaspoon of powderized cardamom. I can always strengthen it a little later if I want that. So there we go. Okay. Now we're going to use cloves, a few cloves, not too many because they are very, very strong. Now you can see that a clove has a head and a stem. And what you, uh, it's not in focus. Okay, now it's in focus. Is it in focus now? Mm -hmm. Okay. So we're going to remove the head and separate it in order. Oh, I just lost the head here. All right. Um, this is where the, where the flavor, we found it, where the flavor will then be exuding from both pieces. We're going to drop three of these cloves. This has no head. I'm going to remove the head from here and drop it in as well. And drop that one in as well. So, and here with the spices, you can have a lot of fun. If you don't like cloves, don't add them. If you don't like star of anise, don't add it. The idea is if, I hope you like cardamom because the whole idea is to have it taste like cardamom. Um, so you can actually steer it in which direction you want a little more. Cardamom has the first note, is the most predominant note. And then you can decide which of the spices will take the second note, third note and fourth note. Ginger. I have here sliced ginger, the three slices. I'm going to, um, because it's organic and fresh, it's very strong. It's only two slices, which I'm going to leave or drop into the pot. 
Okay, now if you want it very strong, then you can add more of your fresh um, ginger or powderized. But I'm telling you, with the with the powderized ginger, um, you will notice that it it might be too strong, just a little too strong. So you have to um, experiment with it yourself. Just start with very little, if you're not sure, and then you progressively add more if you wish. I'm going to add the cassia, cassia, which is our Indian um, cinnamon version. And uh, this will be a small piece. In we go. If you want it a little more, you can add the powder, which is what the Indians do when they cook the karak in the United Arab Emirates. They have the uh, they they actually run all the cafeterias. So let me show you. It's written in German, um, cinnamon, and I'm going to add just a half a. Here we go. A teaspoon of my Ceylon um, cinnamon. There we go. Okay, and what would the Emirati do without? Um, what else was there? Ah, yes, of course. That's what it is. We have to add um, saffron as well. Here is the choice. We don't normally cook. In other words, we don't allow it necessarily to boil um, the, uh, the saffron. It may lose its taste. It's usually baked and it has time to actually exude the flavors. But when it's in water, not necessarily. You can if you want to, but not necessarily. So what we are going to do, we're going to use the mortar and pestle and powderize just a pinch. And that is served after you poured the tea into the cup or into the glass cup. So I'm going to use the mortar and pestle. There we go. Ooh, I think I dropped the, uh, oh, the saffron here. Can we see it? Yes, we can. Okay, that's isn't that wonderful. Oh, this is lovely, lovely smell. And again, it's, I, I just have to, it's um, slightly orangey, slightly citric. It has a complete smell. In other words, there's nothing, oops, there's nothing else missing. And it's so typical of the Iranian um, Zafaran uh, fragrance. So if you can get the Iranian one, try. And if not, don't worry about it. Any Zafaran. And if you don't have any Zafaran, you cannot get it, which is probably the case. It's very difficult for the time being. I normally buy that uh, from, from Amazon, if I can. And if it's not available, then I buy the Spanish one. And sometimes they have one coming also from, I think, Peru. Um, it is originally from Iran from many, 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 many years ago. It tastes a little different, but it's still saffron. Okay, so now we're going to stir it. Ah, but there's something missing here. I'm just going to stir it, and we're going to allow it to simmer. Or actually, just a little higher. It's going to be at medium, medium heat. However, now we're going to be pouring in the milk. In the United Arab Emirates, what they prefer is the very sweetened condensed milk. In, in the United Arab Emirates, it's not called uh, Dovgan, it's called a rainbow, and they already added the, uh, the cardamom. Exquisite. I mean, I could just spoon it. What a sin. What a sin. And then the other option that the Emiratis love is also the um, condensed milk without sugar. That's another one that you, you might be able to get as well. Okay, the other option in my book, in my cookbook, is also mentioned you can use milk. So you can use the milk, and I would go half milk, half cream, just to have that creaminess, exquisite. And the other option here, or here is the, uh, the, uh, the cream, which is 35%. You can have half, half milk, half um, whipping cream, if that's what you want. Otherwise, you can go with the milk that you wish. If you are vegan, then you can do what we all do here at home as well, is use almond milk. You can make, uh, make your own almond milk or you buy your almond milk. The commercial almond milk has rice in it. I don't necessarily recommend it. It has a completely different flavor. If you can make your own, you pre-soak your almonds a handful into the mixer, add a liter of water and you have it done. You don't even have to strain it because the bottom part will actually sink down and can use it for your cereals. Okay, that's for all the vegans, which is exquisite, by the way. I am going to be using my favorite one, not a very healthy one, definitely not very healthy, but I'm going to use the sweetened condensed milk. So, and we're going to be using, oh, look at this. See, very thick, 
very sweet. Oh, exquisite. <laughs> okay, so we're supposed to use behind my son. I have the um, I have oh, one and one third. So I need one cup and one third. So it's I think almost everything actually. And if it doesn't, if it's not enough, I can always use the milk. Okay, one cup. Here we go. We're going to pour it. There we go. Okay, uh, that's one and one and a third. Okay, here it is one and one third. There we go. Uh, I think we're just gonna have enough. That's wonderful. Not yeah, quite, but almost. I'm going to just remove the rest with the spoon. Now again, you, have, you can choose the milk of your choice. There we go. So here comes the last um, one third of the uh, milk or condensed milk, sweetened. And once you have your your cup that I'm going to show you with the tea, we're talking about anywhere between 120 calories and 150 calories. It's a lot, isn't it? Well, you know what? Not a surprise. If we were to go back in history, why this heavy, or as the um, Urdu would say, karak, meaning heavy or stiff or, or very, very, um, very intensive, um, as far as the definition is concerned, um, there's a good reason for it. There were no meals. Very often they didn't have the meal. And the karak was their one meal per day. And it gives them energy. It is, why are the Emiratis drinking? Because it tastes absolutely exquisite. And the rest of the population, we have, I think, almost 10 million, more or less, in the United Arab Emirates, of which 1 million in a little um, is Emirati, and the rest are expats, of which the largest number are Indian from Bangladesh, and they are used to drinking this. And it is also their one meal or two meals. Um, so it's, no, you can't take away, you just cannot take away the sugar. Uh, we all know it's not healthy, but they work a lot, most of the expats, and they need the energy from somewhere, and it's very inexpensive. So that's the reason why. So I'm going to ask my son to come a little closer and to show the color. It's changing color. And under normal circumstances, you let it boil, or you, you let it simmer, either for 20 minutes. I'm going to, and there's another method, which is what most use. You put it high, and you allow it to come to a boil, which is going to come very, very soon. And while we're waiting, we're going, to, we're going to stay here. I'm going to ask my son to come just a little closer to this side. What else is added into the karak to make it smooth? Guess what? I'm going to show you what we do. It's not the Emiratis, but it's the, it's the, um, the hole in the wall cafeterias. The hotels, I don't think so. I have never had cookies or a sugar biscuit um, crumbled into the tea. But most of the cafeterias, they do because they know very well the person coming in is their one and only meal. Sometimes they ask the other expats, meaning myself, um, whether I want it with the sugar cookie or not. But that's, they don't often ask this. What they do is they add um, glucose, a liquid glucose. This is what you have to, if you're there, ask them if they're using liquid glucose. It's not very healthy. If they use crystallized sugar, fine. I think we can accept that to a certain degree. And if you bring your own sweetener, you can also ask them to add your sweetener. All right, I'm going to crumble his sugar biscuit into the uh, tea, which is going to make it, again, a little creamier, a little heavier, as the Urdu would say, karak, karak, meaning very strong, very heavy. we put another one, two of them for one liter. There we go. By the way, if you don't believe me, it's absolutely exquisite. And what a sin. <laughs> okay. I hope you try it. Okay. Are we going to stir it? And it's going to boil very soon. It's going to come to rise to the uh, surface. Okay, there we go. Um, and they also add not only the sugar biscuits, but they also add the... Um, Sometimes they add chocolate biscuits. That is going also beyond the traditional um, uh, karak. Here we go. The first boil, I'm going to ask my son to come a little closer. It's going to rise to the surface. We need to have the tea do that. We need the foam. 
And there you go, it's rising and rising. We're allowed, we're allowed to go just a little higher. Okay, we'll have three rises. The same as what we did with our Arabic coffee. For those of you who were uh, watching me the last time or the second to last time I made Arabic coffee, we allowed it to rise to the surface three times. And it's the same thing here with the Karak chai or Karak tea. Okay, the cookies have not. Oh, yeah, okay, they're actually um, fusing into the tea. There we go, I'm going to put it a little higher. This is the second time we'll allow it to come to the surface a little higher. It's so beautiful to watch the, um, the Indians or the Bangladeshis prepare the um, karak tea in their hole in the wall cafeteria. It's worth um, staying there for the half hour to watch and do it early, early morning. Um, this is what I used to do. I used to just sit in front of them. They would give me a box, uh, a wooden box, and I would watch them. And they said <laughs> I would be the only one, the only expat to do that. Well, maybe I was, I don't know, but it was a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun. As you notice, I had um, probably one of the best times in my life for the five years in the United Arab Emirates. It all had to do with food, all with food, nothing else but food. <laughs> there we go. Okay, third rising, third one, we're done. And I'm going to do the following. I'm going to try to um, strain it. If I, I'm going to ask my son to shit, just um, concentrate on the tea. For a minute. Okay, here we go. We're going to strain it. There we go. And the cookies, if you, um, under normal circumstances, I, I, I would actually break the cookies, but we don't, we're not going to do it here. But under normal circumstances, you can actually mash them in. Uh, maybe I can do it here too. Let's try it. So here we go. Now, any of you have ice cream machines at home? Um, just put your finger up, or just um, give me a just give me a sign. If you had an ice cream, yeah, the, the cookies are now fused into the FT. Um, if you have an ice cream machine, the Karak ice cream is just exquisite. If you allow this tea to cool down, you add another half a liter, half a liter of cream, thirty-five percent. Put it into the uh, ice cream machine. Taste it before if you need more sugar or just a little lemony if you want to. Just 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 a little, just a little or less sugar. You have karak ice cream, so exquisite. So the next time I will make karak ice cream. Although it's not served in the United Arab Emirates, this is what I serve to our guests um, in Abu Dhabi while we were still working there for the German embassy. Okay, and I think we have everything strain through now um, and have a look. Now I'm going to show you with a spoon. I will have my son stay there. It's actually quite thick. Quite thick. And um, we're going to now pour it into a um, into a coffee pot or teapot. And I hope I will be successful. Let's just see. Okay, I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to go over to the sink. I prefer to do it there, just in case. There we go. Okay, so this is how it's served. You can serve it in a glass um, um, serving pot, or you can actually serve it in a, oh no, without this, uh, with a in a traditional, um, Emirati coffee pot. I'm going to just uh, ask my son to wait here and I'll bring it to you. So here we go. This is a traditional, never meant for Karak. It's actually meant for the Emirati coffee. But some Emirati families, they prefer to use the golden one, for example, for the Karak and the silver one for their coffee. Or the other way around, they have their own signals and their own messages. Here, this is the beak of the bird and so on. So next time, we'll have the history of the Emirati coffee pot. So now comes the trick. How to serve Karak. Now, I was not born in India, nor did I practice enough to learn how to pour it the Moroccan way, or in this case, the Indian way. Let's try it. We want lots and lots of bubbles. So 
So there we go. This is lovely. Again, it's the same shape as the coffee pot in the Emirates. Very, very feminine. This is, this is quite intentional. Very hot. And you can touch it here with your right hand. The left hand is left behind for hygiene reasons. It's the Muslim way. Now we are in the United Arab Emirates. What did we make different? Mm -hmm. Here we have the, the Zafaran. I'm going to add a small pinch of the Zafaran into the very little, into the uh, tea. We also added um, the star of anise and a little more of the um, um, cinnamon than what is called for if you were to compare it to the Indian um, uh, recipe. Although no Indian is going to ever reveal to you what their mixture is composed of. You will never know. It might be another spice that I don't have here. I have not been able to discover, other than what I've been told by the Emirati women, not a problem, or Emirati men, or by Emirati chefs, but by the Indian who cooks his own tea every morning, he's religiously saying, no, no, madam, no, no, speak secret, speak secret. Okay, big secret. So this is the karak, exquisite and delicious. How do the Emiratis drink? They drink it just like they drink their Emirati coffee. They hold it the right hand side. Left hand is left for hygiene reasons, so you don't drink or switch back and forth. No, you don't. There is an etiquette of drinking, very elegantly and very slowly. You don't drink it or gulp it down. There's just a sip, a small sip, and you enjoy it. Exquisite. And you know why? It has a fragrance of the um, homes, the Emirati homes, when they use Zafaran. Lovely. It's so lovely. You don't have to add all that sugar, but you have to use sugar anyways. And um, if you're not going to be using your crystallized sugar, make sure that you have the alternative sugar. It has to be. This, it's a sweet that carries um, the flavor and the fat inside for, through the cream that comes to the surface. It's so wonderful. You cannot drink it quickly. Absolutely not. So if you're having, if you're reading a wonderful book, sit and sip this slowly. It's just so exquisite. You will not be able to eat afterwards. That is for sure. Um, or if you're um, alone at home, you can have this and share it with your friends or friend while you're Zooming with others or with your next door neighbor. Lovely. It's better than eat a cappuccino. Lovely. Better than an espresso? Very different. Better? No, but very different. Um, here we go. One sip again. So this is one meal for one person. Very often you will notice that many do not have breakfast, cannot afford it, um, do not have dinner, but they have one or two of these karak cups or glasses. They have a little more. If you were to travel to Oman, which is what I did also, I drove the family to Oman, um, many thousands of kilometers. They also sell um, uh, karak, but it's slightly different. It's even sweeter, but predominantly cardamom with no other spices or virtually no other spices. And it's in a smaller cup and it's far more expensive. So come across the border, come to the UAE and go to a cafeteria hole in the wall and you will enjoy this very much. Okay, having said this, I'm going to put this down and you're going to ask yourself, what is it eaten with? So if you go to a cafeteria, to a hole in the wall cafeteria in the UAE, what else is served? Everything you can possibly imagine, all the way from uh, raw juices, without sugar, with sugar, you have to ask without, otherwise they add the sugar. Obviously they're very good friends with sugar. And um, samosas, very Indian as well. And of course, roti, roti, their round, flat bread. Now let me show you. I did not show you what's inside here. I'm going to ask my son to come a little closer. These are, I made these rotis this morning. They're still flexible and they are not dry. Why? Because I have my roti box. Traditionally, um, amongst the royal families and the noble families in India, they were made out of silver. Here, and I'm going to ask my son to come a little closer. This is a typical um, design that you will also see in Iran. For the Indians, this is the mango of mango. For the Indians as well, but in addition, they have other um, other symbols, or so, sorry, other uh, meanings for that particular design. Or it's the half of the almond for the Indians as well, but mainly um, mango. 
So this is the uh, roti box. And why roti? <laughs> Here it comes. Calorie bomb. We have cream cheese. I'm going to ask my son to come a little closer. It's, you would spread the cream cheese on top of the roti. Fold it. And enjoy the roti, usually a little larger and with more butter on it. I actually spread very little butter on it, but um, if you're going to have the roti at the, um, the roti at the uh, hole in the wall cafeteria, you can ask them to put more butter if you wish, which is not butter, it's ghee or clarified butter. Okay, here is my kanak, here is my roti, and once again, I'm going to enjoy this. Delicious. I'm not sure if I want it because I want more of that. <laughs> okay. Mm. Roti, absolutely exquisite. If you don't like cream cheese, you can add more ghee, clarified butter, or your butter of your choice. And um, definitely nothing sweet. So anything savory or just a little bit of salt on top. Exquisite. All right. So with this in mind, the next time we will meet, we will have a different program, if you know, weather permitting. I will be using my Iranian um, hot pot, or actually a, a Iranian barbecue, and we will prepare something Emirati in that particular fire pot. Okay, with this thought in mind, I'd like to thank you all, and I'm going to be inserting the uh, recipe soon after, in about an hour or so. And if you wish to, con to, to copy that recipe, enjoy it, think of me, or you can buy the book now, you can, internationally on uh, booksarabia.com and they can send it to you. Um, again, I'd like to thank Gaetano. Gaetano Vivo, you are awesome. Thank you for allowing me to be on this program. I wouldn't be here if you hadn't, hadn't had it not been for you. And for the audience, I'd like to thank you all who have come on board. And um, thank you again. It's Alexandra von Hahn. Bye.